business problem that we were trying to solve is that Divergence is a quickly expanding organization. And part of that expansion includes opening up Divergence Labs. So there's going to be a maker space where Divergence students can check out materials and tools to solve real world problems. And of course, when you have that kind of equipment on hand and you're checking it out to people, you've got to have an inventory management system. So what Rachel Ridnauer had approached me with for the Bowsprit application development project was the idea that we were going to create an app that's going to help Divergence Ma uh, Academy manage all of their inventory needs. And ultimately what that turned into was three applications that we built. And, um, and there will be versioning on those and there will be a fourth application as well. You know, but the, the business problem that we had to solve, we realized was almost three separate um, use cases. And so we created an app for each one of those use cases. And there's a lot of overlap and similarities between them. Um, but yeah, ultimately, it was a little bit more involved of a business problem than what it looked like on, on its surface. Prior to starting this project with Bowsprit, I had developed exactly two applications in my life, and one of those was in a lab, so I just copied it out of the Microsoft instruction manual. The other one was my uh, capstone project which was amazing it was a lot of fun but it wasn't nearly as uh, complex a solution as what I developed in the Bowsprit program so my capstone project which I worked in a partnership with Justin Perky to create was a solution to a problem that we saw at Divergence Academy where in the online learning environment, it was sometimes difficult for the instructors to solicit uh, feedback from students who may not necessarily be comfortable interacting verbally, in particular in an online platform where it's, it's just different from what they're used to. And so we wanted to come up with a solution to that reticence that we were seeing that would allow the instructors to be even more effective than they already were. So we created a, um, a survey application, the intent of which was to integrate into the team's environment, which we successfully did. And the instructors would be able to deploy this or have it set on a Microsoft Flow for an automatic deployment so that midweek they could gauge where are students at? Are they learning the things that they expected to learn? Are they learning the things that we expected them to learn? Is there anything that we need to focus on in the second half of the week that maybe they didn't grasp completely in the first half? And it would be an anonymous feedback system. So people who have challenges providing that kind of feedback, especially if it can come across as potentially critical, um, you know, would have a platform for doing that and get real-time information to those instructors so that they can adapt the second half of the week based off of the feedback from the first half. The versioning uh, capabilities of that program are actually just incredible because if you properly capture all of the data and you structure the surveys correctly, you can come up with an insane amount of predictive analytic data that you could feed through a machine learning algorithm to help people understand or to help the organization understand um, which instructors are the most effective at teaching which subjects, which subjects are the hardest for students to grasp, which students are most likely to have a positive employment outcome after graduation, um, and even those uh, predictive analytics could be applied to the student selection process for Divergence Academy. So ultimately, if you can expand that into a huge ecosystem of, of an, uh, analytical insights for business decision making. process of how we were going to approach this business problem of inventory management and checking out items to, to students in labs came down 
initially to asking as many questions as possible. And my goodness, we asked a lot of questions. We gathered a lot of information about what potential solutions there would be and got into some pretty deep conversations about what an MVP should look like to solve this business problem. So right here, we put together a wireframe based on the information that uh, that we had gathered. These are kind of the requirements that we had gathered in their most distilled essence. Ultimately, what we discovered is that we were tracking two different types of items, bulk items, which were gonna be sorted by UPC and location and individual items, which were sorted by serial number. Uh, and then we were tracking location status and condition. And so the challenge then becomes, how do we put this kind of a solution into an application and a database and we answered that by coming up with this wireframe decided what we wanted to do was have two different applications one for staff then one for um for students there we go um and ultimately what we want to do is start with a barcode scanner determine is this item in inventory if it's not Let's put in a screen for them to add it and then make it really easy for them to add serial numbers as applicable. Um, you know, and then what we'd want to do too is have additional screens to make sure that once an item is in inventory, can we adjust those inventory amounts and how do we accomplish that? I think it was an easy solution to use Power Automate to solve this particular business problem for two reasons, really. And number one is that you know, the first task that I set about accomplishing after my my interviews, after determining what the business problem was and what potential ways there were to solve it, was to figure out if there was an off-the-shelf solution that we could use for this. I think that anytime you're working with a, a client, if you can provide a ready-made solution that's custom fit for their needs, then, you know, it's our responsibility to do that. Unfortunately, those solutions are just simply um, either overpowered, overpriced, or not well adapted to the use case that Divergence needed, which left us with really one direction to go. Let's build the app ourselves. Using Power Apps to do that, uh, and we had looked at using Power Automate and Flow as well, was a natural direction to go in because Divergence already runs off of the Microsoft ecosystem. It simply makes sense from an economic and a practical point of view that we continue to use that ecosystem. And it didn't hurt that I already know how to use Power Apps and that made it kind of easier. Thinking about how data would be used and how data would react to the systems that we put in place is something that prior to my time at Divergence in the Data Science Immersive, I would have had no idea even how, even that I should consider those things, let alone how to think about those things. And so having that understanding of, you know, this is how data behaves in a database and how it behaves when you retrieve it and how we can optimize performance and at what level of or what size of database we start coming into uh, challenges when we're working with different systems. And so we're working with SharePoint as well as with um, with Power Apps. And so there's limitations on how much information you want to transmit and, and definitely on how much you want to search and how you want to search it when we're working with uh, SharePoint versus say a SQL database. But the size of the information that we have right now uh, and in the foreseeable future just doesn't justify working with something as robust as SQL. And so we went with the more user-friendly option that still has a long runway for divergence in, in this uh, environment of using the SharePoint list. Um, yeah, and I think that, uh, you know, again, going back to all of that information that I gathered and all of the practical applications, the, the labs that we did at Divergence gave me a great basis of knowledge and understanding for working on those problems. My advice to an incoming 
BOSPRIT participant or to anybody working on their first business problem is to ask as many questions as you possibly can, get as granular of information as you can, because it's easier to edit out when you have too much to work with than it is to go back over and over again to ask for more clarification or to get more direction or more information. So we have to respect the time of our, our clients and our colleagues. And I think that putting a lot of preparation into those initial stakeholder interviews is really key to showing that respect to everybody. And it's really key to creating a successful MVP that meets the business needs. If you haven't adequately figured out what the business needs are on step one or step two, then by the time you get to step 10 or step 20, you're gonna be pretty far off base. And it's really hard to course correct at that point and get to where it needs to be. I think that my biggest lesson learned is that a lot of the time you don't know what you don't know. And that's part of why experience is so valuable because going into this process, I didn't know what I didn't know about creating apps. I didn't know what I didn't know about inventory. Uh, I knew a fair amount about gathering stakeholder requirements and distilling that into a workable action plan. But I came across a lot of challenges going through this that weren't addressed on my wireframe or in my uh, MVP outline or my sprints, where just the logistics of moving a number from one column to another column or making sure that uh, changing numbers in two columns correspond correctly to each other was not as simple and straightforward as I would have expected it to be. And yeah, I think my biggest takeaway, my biggest lesson learned from this is create project after project after project, even if you're not working for somebody, like just keep creating projects because, you know, I mean, I came into this wanting to make really pretty graphics about data and I came out of it saying, I want to automate business processes and to be good at that, I think the only way to really understand is to do it. The biggest thing that I would do differently if I was going to do a similar project for another company is that after creating the MVP requirements and the wireframe, I would go directly to professionals that I respect who have more experience in solving these problems than I do and just ask them for a few minutes of their time and say, this is my problem. This is how I think I'm going to solve my problem. Can you see anything that I'm overlooking here? Or can you point me in the direction of a resource that I may not know exists or that I may not know I can use for this application? And I think that in doing so, I could save myself a lot of heartache and a lot of headache uh, in, in the whole building process and in uh, versioning and revising by leaning on professionals who have gone there before and have already offered their assistance, um, I need to be better at, uh, at learning to ask for that assistance. If I ever had the opportunity to come back and work with Bowsprint, uh, again, uh, potentially in, in a mentorship position or, or any other position, I think that I would like to work on more applications and in process automation, because I think that business process automation is a problem that everybody has, whether they know it or not. And it's something that can easily be solved with really affordable tools right now. and. You know, I love, I have a huge passion for small and growing organizations and Divergence fits the bill. So solving problems for a company like Divergence just makes me happy. And the idea that I can th take my process thinking and everything that I've learned about data science, um, about the Microsoft Power Platform, 
and uh, and business process automation and roll it up into an actionable solution for a company like Divergence um, would be just fantastic. Uh, if I was in a mentorship position, helping people understand how to think about uh, solutions in terms of processes uh, and in terms of actionable solutions, rather than providing information, you provide you know, the information that is a roadmap to get to where the client wants to be. I think that thinking like that and, and figuring out how to create solutions versus just information is something that, you know, I could certainly bring to the table. I feel so incredibly grateful um, and so lucky to have been in the right place with an organization that's forward thinking enough to offer a program like this so that I could get some real world hands on experience. Because ultimately, you know, when I when I created my capstone project, which I was really proud of, I was doing it with a client in mind with a theoretical client in mind. But ultimately, I chose a problem that I identified and wanted to fix and I fixed it in the way that I wanted to see done. And that's not how the real world works. We have to have clients and we have to have employers and they have their own uh, business cases and requirements for the work that we're going to do. And Bosprit gave me the opportunity to take all of that incredible theoretical knowledge and apply it in a real world work scenario where I'm meeting a specific client's needs the way that they need their needs met, not the way I think they should be met. And it was just fantastic. I've done a lot of cool programs in my life, but that was uh, truly top notch.